Hello, I'm David Guthrie, a preacher with His Word Lives Ministry. I'm going to be sharing a message today with you from the Word of God. We're in the book of John in chapter 15 in verses 1 through 6. This is where Jesus was telling his disciples that I am the true vine. He's describing himself as the true vine and God the Father as the gardener. Let's read this scripture now. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. We see here where God the Father and his son Jesus Christ are explaining a relationship with them. Jesus says to his disciples, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman or the gardener. Listen, God the Father sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he sent his son, Jesus, into the world and to have a ministry and make it possible for us to have a connection and a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, and to God the Father, that we could know both of them. And this relationship is an eternal and a divine relationship that lasts forever and ever. Now we're talking about bearing fruit. We're talking about being productive as Christians. God's word tells us in verse two, every branch in me, that's every person that believeth in Jesus Christ as the son of God, and that he died on a cross to be a sacrifice for all the sins of the world, even their sins. And now they proclaim him, Jesus, as their Lord and their Savior, and Jesus has forgiven them for their sins. Every branch in me, every branch, the branch being people that believe in Jesus. <clears throat> and he gives a scenario where we have branches or people that believe in Jesus that are bearing fruit, and people that believe in Jesus that are not bearing fruit. God's word says again, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. <clears throat> Listen, every branch that God has ever made, every believer in Jesus Christ has opportunities to bear fruit and be productive in their life as a Christian. If they become lazy, if they become distant from their Savior, Jesus, God the Father will deal with them. It says here that those that bear not fruit, he taketh away the opportunity to be productive. However, Every branch that does bear fruit, 
<clears throat> he also deals with that branch or that person that's bearing fruit and being productive in their Christian life. He pruneth it or purges it or he trims it or changes the opportunities that he gives these as Christians, these that are being productive. He changes the opportunity and, and for the increase of more opportunities or for the opportunity to bear more fruit in their Christian life. Verse 3 tells us that we are claimed through the word of God, that Jesus has spoken to these disciples, that Jesus has spoken to us believers and Christians today through the word of God, his holy Bible. He's spoken to us and told us to how to live in the truth, to live and do the things that are correct the godly character that we learn about through God's holy divine scriptures and how we can apply these into our life and live a way in which we know we are being cleaned by the truth. Those of us that believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior have been forgiven for our sins because he is a substitutionary sacrifice on the cross. He took our sins and paid the penalty for them. And now we are washed clean as white as snow. We are washed and God looks upon us as complete. He even imparts Jesus' righteousness on us. We are made righteous because of our belief and faith in Jesus Christ. We receive being cleaned by God in his way. And the word of God helps us in all kinds of ways, how to love people, how to forgive people, how to have and think more of others than ourselves. In a lot of different ways, God's holy scriptures Clean us along the way. And Jesus is telling his disciples this. The sayings that he has given them. The commandments that he has given them. All of these things that he has spoken unto them about. This is their way to live a godly life and be clean from all unrighteousness. Praise God for what he's doing. With us Christians today, he's taking us and working with us. And one day, we'll be perfect and glorified. And we will be totally clean. And we will be like Jesus, the scripture said. Jesus then gives a commandment to the disciples and to us. He tells us to abide in me and I in you. Jesus is telling them to stay with me. Don't stumble. Don't go astray. Stay close to me. Jesus is telling his disciples. He's telling them as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Listen, us as Christians, we may have faith and believe in Jesus Christ, but we need to stay with Jesus. We need to continue to allow Jesus to be in us. We need to have personal communication in prayer, personal meditation in speaking with Jesus and him speaking with us and living out the clean life, the way, the character of God that he is showing us through God the Holy Spirit in that we are not a branch of ourselves. We are a branch that has Jesus in us as well. Jesus says, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, 
except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, no more can we, no more could the disciples in Jesus' day bear fruit, except ye abide in me. <clears throat> we got to continue to walk after Jesus. We got to continue to seek him and request that he be in the things that we do. We have to stay connected to Jesus the same way a branch has to stay connected to the vine. Jesus then says and states again, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Listen, Jesus is the vine. Jesus is the vine. We're the branches. The disciples of Jesus Christ. We're the branches. We have a need. And in order to be productive, have to stay and abide in Jesus. Jesus says then, He that abideth in me, he that stays with me, and I in him, and we seek him out in our lives, and humble ourselves before him, and allow him into us. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. Listen, if there's not fruit or productive works going on in your Christian life, there's one of two things wrong. One being, <clears throat> are you abiding in Jesus? The other being, is Jesus in you? We have, it's a two-way street. We have to be submitted to Jesus, and we have to allow him into us and take us and change us and transform us as people in our spiritual life to grow and be more like Christ inside of us. And if we do that, we'll bear fruit and much fruit, or we'll see our works. We'll see productive results from our Christian life. Praise God for this scripture. It tells us about our daily life with Jesus. <clears throat> I want to read verse 6 too. This is for the man that does not abide in Jesus. This is for the man that does not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is for the man that has never pronounced Jesus as his Savior. Verse 6 says, If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. He's just cast forth. He's not a part of Jesus. He's not a connected to the vine. And he withers. After his natural life, he withers as an old branch that you see out in the woods. And it's a sad thing for anyone to ever get into that situation. But this withered branch, men shall gather them and cast them into fire and they are burned to be eternally separated from God because they didn't receive the gift of God. They didn't move and believe in Jesus as the Son of God. Listen, if you're in that situation today, get down on your knees and realize that God loves you. Again, the scripture says, for God so loved the world. That's people that are not saved. He gave his only begotten son. He sent Jesus down here on earth in the form of a man. That whosoever believeth in him. That if you will believe that Jesus is the son of God. And died on a cross to be the sacrifice for your sin. Ye shall not perish but have everlasting life. Today can be the day of your salvation, and you can know Jesus, 
and you can abide in him and he in you. Praise God for salvation and the gift that God makes possible. I want to go ahead and go into prayer time today. I have a certain couple of prayer requests from Sister Lee Garrett. She asked prayer for a fellow high school uh, student of ours, Jim Gerard, that's had a stroke. And we want to remember Jim and we want to pray for him and his ability to recover from this stroke. And she also asked prayer for another classmate, Sandy Pollinger, that has recently passed away. And we want to remember her family and lift them up in prayer as they go through this time of Sandy passing away. And also pray for all the friends um, of Sandy's. I want to pray for David Herr. On June the 1st, he's going to the American Embassy in South Korea for an immigration visa interview. And I pray that things go well there. Christopher Wyatt. And I want to pray for his mother's health. Tony Grass. I want to pray for Tony. Mary Higgins. I want to pray for Mary. I'd like to pray for Dr. Edward Kershey that's on a mission trip and safe travels for Dr. Kershey and that God would bless his work and that God, he would be fruitful for God on this trip. I want to pray for David Peeler. And in the pastor's meeting, we uh, asked prayer for him. He is uh, the pastor at Pleasant Hill. And he's got a bad flu and chest pains. So let's remember David. Now you lift up your prayer request. We want to pray for you as well. Dear Jesus, we come to you in prayer. We thank you, God, for another opportunity and day to live and serve you and seek out to be productive as Christians. God, we lift up all these prayer requests, God. And we just pray for each and every one of these in the in their situation, God, and the, for the viewers that are praying to you now, God, we pray for them and lift their request up to you. God, thank you for loving us, Lord. Thanking it, thank you for making it possible for us to have a relationship, an eternal life relationship with you forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.